Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, many, many thanks to uh, uh, Rodrigo and Tanali. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, it was like a short notice. I, I, I asked them to, uh, to come. And so, yeah, really uh, thank you for welcoming me. Uh, today, I will uh, talk about my um, global approach of um, audiovisual, of my audiovisual practice. So uh, I'm based in Mon Montreal in Canada, and I'm working wi with uh, both sound and image uh, in really a musical context. So uh, I will talk to you about that by uh, presenting to you a uh, lot of examples of my projects and how uh, all of those projects are connected together through the movement of the natural environment. Sorry for my English. <laughs> okay. uh, so I will uh, start by uh, really uh, talk to you, present to you my uh, creative process. Uh, so uh, everything that I'm doing is connected to the na natural environment. Everything is start from the natural world. Uh, so uh, my um, process is really in two bits, um, behavior of observe, feel, listen, and capture the movement of the nat natural environment. Um, after I work a lot with uh, those materials that I capture and those feelings that I have when I have uh, this experience in the nature, and I blend the materials together to uh, to uh, and I I try to do uh, uh, pieces that are really connected to my uh, memory of this experience in the world and uh, to the movement and to so it's like a little poems or tune at the end and I will talk a little bit more about littoral and the tuning of the pills uh, they are my last project that I made so I will talk a little bit more about to begin, to begin, I will just show you, show you a little excerpt of phases, just like that you will understand uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> just a little. Uh, segment of the piece. Uh, so you, you saw birds and waters and clouds all mixed together with a kind of py uh, pyramid, you know, the line. Uh, so it's really like more like a dream. Uh, all of, of, of this really approach uh, is coming uh, to the experience, uh, as I said, uh, from my own experience. But I think that um, all experience to the world, you know, we all uh, experience the movement and the physical laws in, in this planet. So it's really like, and when we experience uh, it, uh, really with, I think, all our senses, our eyes, our body, our everything. So I really like this uh, citation of uh, Bidiola, uh, who said, I think of all the senses are as being unified. I do not consider sound as separate from image. So I'm really connected to that. Uh, we usually think of the camera as an eye and the microphone as an ear, an ear, but all the senses exist simultaneously in our bodies, interwoven into one system that includes sensory data, neural processing, memory, imagination, and all the mental events of the moment. This all adds up to create the larger phenomenon we call, we call experience. Field perception is the awareness or sensing of an entire space at once. Sorry, I don't found it in Spanish, but if you are interested, take the uh, reference and notes. 
Um, so, uh, like uh, I said, um, all my projects uh, start from this kind of exercise or kind of activity. So I go to to nat natural site. It depends of my project, but and I take a lot of pictures, a lot of video, a lot of sounds, and I just uh, also do nothing, <laughs> just to feel the place, you know. So here it's a river in Quebec, another river in Quebec. Uh, here it's uh, for a project in Poitiers in France, uh, and in uh, Marseille in uh, France too. Uh, so I was just there uh, for a lot, a lot of days, just feeling the place and uh, taking a lot of materials. And after I come back in my studio and I just play with everything. Uh, so I, there are examples uh, of what I'm thinking when I are, uh, I am uh, on this uh, site. Uh, so they are not um, all materials that I use, but it really just inspired me. So textures, I take a lot of textures because I work a lot with them. Birds, you can see this yellow. Uh, picture is, I took it here in the window like a few years ago, it's Moriella, it's Moriella, and I'll, I take a, a lot of birds always. Uh, I work a lot with clouds too because the shapes are so amazing and uh, I work a lot, a lot, a lot with water. It's like because the, it's really powerful water and the movement of water is really rich and really, um, there are a lot of kind of movement of water, and you have also the ice, the water, and yeah. So um, you will see that all my pieces have water uh, in them. So the next step uh, is really to work, to play with those materials, and I mix everything with my memories. So I I will produce um, new sounds, new image, just to blend together, uh, everything together. So I call that a musical writing of sounds and image. I don't write music, I can for musicians, but I really, uh, for me it's like a writing because I, I, I put sounds and image together I, and I just compose music with all of them. Uh, like I, I said, for me image is, is like sound, so my brain is like in the same place when I play with image or sound. I'm just doing music. Um, I, I, I found a, a, this citation in Spanish, if you want to, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's from uh, Victor Hugo. I really like this citation too because it's really connected to my feeling about music and just the natural world and water and art and everything. So um, uh, it said, uh, music is the vapor of art. It is the, to poetry what reverie is to stop, what the fluid is to the liquid, li uh, sorry, liquid, what the ocean of clouds is the, to the ocean of waves. If another description is required, it is the indefinite uh, of this infinite. The same insufflation pushes it, carries it, raises it, upsets it, fills it with trouble and light and with an ineffable sound saturates it with electricity and causes it to give suddenly this charge yes, of thunder. So, um, so uh, yes, I, I can't add anything to, <laughs> to this. Um, so um, the, the next step when I, I work with those materials, I will connect said, uh, uh, those materials uh, with another with other sounds. So I work a lot with musicians. I really like to uh, collaborate with people because they can bring another uh, sensi sensitivity to, uh, to my ideas. And uh, I work a lot with Ida Taninato. She is a saxophonist. She's always almost at all of my <laughs> pieces. Uh, Tommy Davis, uh, who is saxophonist too, uh, is playing a lot, a lot with tub tubs. And uh, J Jeremy Jones uh, comes with the upright uh, bass that you just uh, 
here uh, on the, the Excel that I, I, I uh, should use. So I will also uh, uh, often do other recording. For example, if I was uh, in a place with a lot of water but without bus, boats, or, or if I don't have enough spurs, or I, I, I don't know, I will, I will um, do other recordings to have more uh, stuff to work with. I also play a lot of objects and syn synthesizer. Uh, I'm coming from the post work uh, scene. I'm keyboardist and pianist, so I really like to play uh, with keyboards and synthesizer and objects. So um, I, I will use uh, different kind of objects just to create new sounds, like a bicycle wheel. I really like it because you can just do a lot of iterations and sound with that. Um, so yeah, so I will record a lot of those sounds too, and I will mix everything together. For the images, uh, for the visual materials, I, I, I really, um, the idea in, in my project uh, are really to capture the movement, not to really give a, a realist image of the world. I really like to capture the movement and underlying the colors, the lines, everything, uh, just to abstract them a little bit. And, uh, and it's, that's funny because uh, when I, uh, I was working on uh, my project, I was um, uh, on uh, Kabir Kuba, this one. It's about the river that you saw just before, just the river. And I, and I was working on it, and one of my friends told me, oh, it, um, it uh, makes me think of Za Obuki, the painter. Uh, it's really similar, <laughs> I find. And I didn't know, and I was, oh, he was really, really uh, inspired by water, too. So do two people inspired by water <laughs> make abstract uh, visuals? Uh, it's really like, and um, I really like it when you, you see those connections and you didn't know, and I think it's part of this uh, ecosystem that I'm trying to work with this ecosystem. It's just us, the world, and everything, and we are all connected. It's, it's really fun when you, f you find this kind of, of uh, connection. It's uh, again Zao uh, Wuki here, the black and white, and it's from my project Elements. There, it's like the same thing, and it's from water to this thing. I, I, I made this project Elements here at the CEMAS uh, with my collaborator Pierre Leclerc, and uh, yeah, just thing. Um, another uh, connection with my uh, project phases, and another pic uh, painting of. The Wookie, it's like almost the same color. And uh, another painter who were really inspired by water uh, is Caspar uh, uh, David Friedrich. Uh, this kind of, uh, you know, fog and water are really um, connected to uh, one of my work called Reflet. There, we don't see very well, but you can imagine. Um, <laughs> so another example uh, of like deformation of visual is one with birds with clouds and water and forest and uh, with water too so uh, this painter Jean-Paul Riappel is from uh, Quebec and he is making uh, a lot of uh, painting uh, inspired by birds and water and mountains and the nature and when I see his painting too I'm like oh I it's like really the kind of visual that I'm trying to do. Uh, so uh, another thing that I, uh, I do when I work with my visuals is to recreate movements that I observed uh, during my little uh, uh, experience in the nature uh, and to connect them a little bit with the human activity. Uh, so in Vague, this piece uh, was about uh, Water vague is uh, waves, uh, waves, and uh, this one is uh, aviron. You know, like this uh, this movement that you make when you do like canoeing. Or <laughs> so uh, I was really um, uh, a little bit obsessed with this movement. <laughs> so I don't know why, and with the movement of luck. You know, the big luck when the boats 
are passing uh, uh, on water. So I I took uh, I I took this shape. You know, here I recreate a little bit like this abstract, but the shape of luck there and there, and I recombine everything to make this uh, to uh, this movement of uh, how do you call that? What? Grimard. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> Thank you. I will show you a little excerpt. Water and but you can hear a uh, uh, upright bass, the chuk 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 and uh, and uh, the bicycle wheel, the little iterations uh, are made with that. So it's really like a melting pot <laughs> and a lot of things. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea in this piece was really to connect uh, the water with our activity as human. Um, so uh, another piece uh, that I made. Uh, uh, phases that I, I showed you a uh, little uh, excerpt, but it was like uh, at the second part in the second part of the piece. So I will show you uh, the first part, which is really um, uh, the movement that I wanted to explore is the melting melting ice and avalanches because I the first idea with this project was to work with ice. And when I I began my uh, little exploration in the north of Quebec. I, it was in February, but the, the ice was melting. I was like, oh no, I can't do my project, I don't have ice. Uh, so, uh, and it's really related to, like the, the, our, the climate is changing a lot. In Quebec, we really see it, our winter are shorter and we don't have a lot of uh, snow uh, anymore. So, and I realized that, so I, I, I began obsessed with the melting ice. And I did a lot of sampling of uh, icebergs in the north and the idea of melting ice and the water and the avalanches, you know, the, the snow when it's really like. So I remake all of this movement uh, in a live performance. So it's all played, played live and I recorded it. <laughs> like about this phenomenon. But the first idea was, was not to do something really connected to climate change, but when you work with the natural world, at some point you have no choice to just see it and, and just think about it uh, now. So I'm gonna uh, talk to you a little bit about this project that I made, uh, I made with uh, Cathy Hein. Maybe some people from the UK here uh, know uh, her. I know she came here at the CMAS too a few years ago. Uh, I made this project with her uh, just before the COVID <laughs> pandemic. So uh, we, uh, we worked a little bit together through a few residencies, but 
uh, after we did all the projects uh, remotely. So uh, the idea uh, with uh, Literal was uh, Katian, with uh, is a really um, like awesome artist, and she's working a lot with objects, with installation. And I don't. It was my first project with really real objects. So uh, we worked a lot uh, with. Um, uh, the idea was to uh, to do something about the uh, rising of the ocean levels. And uh, we didn't really know what we wanted to do with that, but we wanted to, to work with water and, and with plants because uh, yeah, it was like our first idea. And so we made those like uh, stack, we stack up of, of kind of, um, uh, it's, it's like kind of shape, shape of the lens like that, and we put water in it. And when we put a paper like that, and we pass the uh, the light through the lens, you know, you see reflection. It's like the the idea. The idea. So uh, we uh, we make those objects, and we made a lot of uh, field recordings uh, on the west uh, coast of the UK, uh, in near Bristol, near Cove uh, Park in Scotland, and we made also a lot of uh, recordings in Quebec, so it's like the east coast of Quebec. Uh, so it's like uh, the idea was uh, to work with the, uh, the rising uh, level of the ocean, North Atlantic Ocean between our two countries. Uh, so we made uh, those first experimentation and uh, we, uh, we wanted to connect the light, so the reflections with the sound. I, show you the first experiment. So you can see when we touch water, it, it moves. Uh, so uh, we, uh, after we we uh, we uh, made some solenoid to tap into water, and everything to make water uh, moving like that. So uh, for the old piece for the music, uh, we first started to um, to just go outside and see the just the place, uh, the nature in Cove Park, Scotland, because it's, uh, we were in the residency there. And there, they, they are a lot, a lot of little, uh, what do you call that? We saw, you know? Streams, thank you. Streams. And when you walk in this, uh, in this landscape, uh, you can hear a stream there, and a stream there, another stream there, and a stream there, and a lot of streams like that. And uh, so uh, we, uh, when we came back, uh, from this first uh, uh, ex exploration, uh, we had this idea to just uh, compose the music with this, uh, with those kind of streams, those kinds of players who are uh, just uh, crossfading together. So I made some, just down my notes, personal <laughs> notes about like uh, what what I've heard. Uh, there um, and after I worked a little bit with my field recordings in Cecilia, it's like a software for for just play with the sound. And I was really inspired by the mountains there, so <laughs> I was just uh, just dry, uh, driving uh, anything just by inspiration. And and uh, actually the re the result were uh, very interesting, so I kept them. Um, and uh, we, uh, we also uh, wanted to work with data. Uh, we didn't know what to do with that because it's, not, it's really complex. And, um, but we, we had uh, this, uh, this, uh, we had uh, some um, meetings with geologists and she, uh, she showed us like where to find data about that and she explained to us all the complexity of uh, ice uh, 
uh, of rising uh, sea level. And uh, at, at the end, we, uh, we took some uh, CVS uh, files like that on a website. Uh, it's coming from the uh, laboratory. And uh, at the end, we found that all the data about the ocean uh, in the world are, are uh, a little bit like that, you know? You see the, the curve there? So we, uh, we decided to, to do this kind of form in our piece, like to do like something really, really more uh, static at the beginning. And the more, the more it, uh, going, it, it's going up like that, uh, the more uh, there are activities in the music. And we made a little uh, Max for Life patch to control with the C CSV file uh, a lot of uh, parameters in our music. Uh, so uh, since we did this project remotely, I did the performance, uh, a solo performance for the premiere in Montreal. So I was just uh, me, <laughs> it was just me with uh, this kind of uh, ecosystem of objects and data and it was really interesting, the most interesting thing about this project for me, it's that uh, for the first time in my life <laughs> as musicians, I was not controlling uh, everything in the stage because of the data. And um, it's really interesting because I was, oh, it's really like an ecosystem where um, I'm there, but I don't really know uh, what everything uh, that will happen, you know? Uh, so I play with objects, they are solenoid, controlled by data, the lights, and I play a little bit keyboards, but I really uh, more in a listen, like uh, I'm listening a lot because I don't know. And I, I, I try to, uh, to uh, really uh, control a little bit the amplitude of the sound and everything because it can go just uh, crazy. So it's really interesting and I put water in the lens, like plants, <laughs> like if I put pl uh, water in, in my plants, it's really like another kind of, of uh, experience to uh, perform on stage. Um, I will show you just a little. and we were like doing a lot of things on stage, uh, but uh, yeah. So the, uh, just a few words about the piece that I will present tonight, my uh, audiovisual performance, uh, The Tuning of the Field. Uh, it's a performance that I did last fall, and, but uh, it was a, an idea that uh, I, uh, I had since a long time, the idea to do something with the cricket sounds songs, you know, the sounds of crickets, the insects. Um, and uh, I came from this place. <laughs> uh, we don't really, uh, it's near Montreal in Quebec in Canada. And it's a place with a lot of uh, agriculture. It's really like the center of agriculture in Quebec, uh, a province in Canada. And I, I, com I, I come from there. Uh, my parents are still there. And there are a lot of fields, but it's really monoculture, uh, really a lot of pesticide, you know, like those big, big fields. And uh, since, uh, and during my, my childhood there, I remember that uh, we had like a, 
uh, they were like fireflies and little strawberries and a lot of insects and frogs that uh, and they are not there anymore. Uh, they just disappeared <laughs> with the time. And uh, when I go there, I always uh, hear the cricket sound uh, at night, and it's really beautiful. And once I, I was just thinking, oh, maybe they will disappear, disappear too, because of this just uh, really bad <laughs> environment uh, for the ecosystem. So they are the fields. And I always take this road when I go to my parents and I go back to Montreal. And it's awesome, the, the songs of the crickets, because when you are by car, you, you hear also the Doppler effect. And it's just, wow, I love it. So I became obsessed with this sound. Uh, and, um, and with also like all the, you know, the geographic uh, uh, stuff about topographic maps and everything, and the landscape and the territory. So, so I combined both in this project. And I became like, but I didn't know what really to do like for the, 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 the world piece. And uh, this uh, last June, I was there in Sedona in the USA. And I heard this, those cricket sound and with all the layers and wow, the specialization, it was Awesome. So I had my idea. I was like, okay, I, I, I know what I will do with this piece after hearing that. I a lot of people but you can hear a lot of and it's really an uh, electric sound so I decided for this project to uh, do just uh, uh, modular synthesis uh, and I play it for um, it's just that for uh, the world show um, and it's really about my my uh, memories about it it's a project like in maybe I don't know you can imagine maybe in 30 years there are no more crickets there. And it's my memories about my experience there. Uh, I'm gonna show you just a little excerpt. You, if you are there uh, tonight at the concert, you will see uh, the whole thing. Uh, just, uh, and uh, after if you have any questions. <laughs> Maps. I did it with the touch designer. And it's all connected to uh, the sound piece. So if you are more interested uh, about uh, uh, this kind of uh, project, you can uh, uh, you can read those chapters that I wrote uh, in an awesome book uh, called uh, Sound Image: Audiovisual Aesthetic and Practice. Uh, it's a book with a lot of chapters about audiovisual. Uh, practices and uh, it's really interesting uh, you can uh, write to me if you want uh, just for fun <laughs> so uh, thank you uh, everyone uh, I want to thank the the one of the research group that uh, I'm from and uh, yeah thank you